What's up guys? Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you how to create consistent branded images for your social channels. So download the free template file for this lesson from the description below and I'll pass you over to Rory now who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. Now before we jump into our template document here in Adobe Illustrator, it's worth mentioning that creating strong and consistent imagery across the social channels you use is so important for your brand recognition, especially with how crucial social media is for marketing these days. This video is mainly aimed at freelance graphic designers given the nature of this channel, but really applies to anyone running their own business, big or small. Now as Ross mentioned, you can download this template file that we've set up to help you create your own branded social media images with relative ease as we'll show you now. So as you can see on screen here we have a whole range of artboards set up and these are set up to the optimal sizes for each of the social media images. Now we've also sectioned these up into the main social media channels so we have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube as well. Now YouTube isn't necessarily going to be used by that many people but it is a useful marketing tool as well so we've included it in this template. So as you can see we've got these artboards set up and they're all labeled so it's very clear what each of them is and we also have the pixel sizes noted as well. Now if I actually grab my artboard tool over on the left hand side if I select this first Facebook profile picture for example you can see up in the control bar here this is set up at 720 by 720 which is the recommended size for Facebook profile pictures. Same goes for things like the cover pictures. So all of these sizes are true to the artboard size. So this is going to come in very useful when it comes to exporting these. You'll also notice that these artboards are labeled as well. So again, this is useful when we export them. These artboard names are going to be applied in the file name. So this is going to make things very easy for you when you go to upload these. It should all be very organized. If I move over to our layers panel, you can see we have a few different layers set up here so these labels we're seeing is purely for your own convenience so you know which image is which all these layers can of course be toggled we also have a guides layer at the top now these guides won't be exported in the final images they are purely to give you an idea of where the safe zones in some of these images are now a lot of these images will actually change depending on the device they're being viewed on so that's why we set up these guides to give you a rough safe area to, to contain the important aspects of your design so that they don't accidentally get cropped on certain devices. A lot of social media platforms now use a circular profile picture so even though we have to set this up as a square image we've still included a circular guide so that you can try and fit anything like your logo or whatever it is within this circle. So this is the same for things like Instagram. We don't have any kind of cover image for Instagram it's purely the profile picture. LinkedIn we have a slight difference because this is going to to depend on the type of account you have and there's slight differences between a business page and a personal page as you can see with the cover picture sizes. Another thing to note is that the business page uses a square profile picture whereas the personal account uses a circular profile picture. So there are a few subtle differences. Things like YouTube is also quite tricky because we're creating one cover image that has to actually work on a TV screen as well as a computer screen, mobile devices, tablets. So that's why we have such a big canvas here, but you'll see we have these guidelines where we need to keep any important information so that it's not been cropped. Same goes for Twitter as well. We have some safe areas set up. So this is all very easy to use. If you want to hide these guidelines, we've got them locked on their own layer at the top and you can easily toggle the visibility if you want a clearer idea of how your designs are looking. So we've actually set up some basic designs for our Graphic Designer Pro channel to show you roughly how we go about setting up our own images. So I'm going to start by toggling this backgrounds layer. Now of course if you download this template file you will be putting in your own designs but this is just a rough guide as to how we go about putting our designs together. As you can see with these Facebook images we have two quite different backgrounds going on and this is the case for all of them. So if I zoom out you'll see they'll all look pretty similar. Now as 
as I was saying at the start, this is because we want to create consistency across our social media channels, which is very important. Now, we're not saying that you have to do the exact same thing and apply the exact same assets on every one of your cover images and profile images. You can, of course, vary this a little bit, but keep the style consistent so that if someone's going from your Facebook page to your LinkedIn, for example, it's clear that it's part of the same branding. So as you can see, we're using quite a dark background for our profile picture and then quite a light and colorful background for our cover image. And that's just purely to create some contrast between the two. Certainly on social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, the profile image slightly overlaps the cover image. So having that contrast is going to keep the profile image standing out against the cover image. These kinds of things are good to think about when you're designing your own. Think about how they're going to sit with one another and if there's anything you can do to make them stand out better. These images are all very consistent in appearance. We're repeating these brand colors that we have here. We're repeating the subtle pattern in the background and this is consistent on the cover image and the profile images as well. And what I can do now is go back over to my layers panel and toggle my logo slash design layer and now we're going to see the actual logos in place as well. So one thing to note is that we're using the more simplified letter mark version of our logo for the profile images and that's because they're going to appear much smaller. So we would recommend using a more simplified version of your logo. If you have a logo mark for example or a letter mark as we do in this case, it's going to work generally better than a more complicated design or a full logo because they're going to be appearing much smaller anyway. Now you'll notice as well that our usual logo actually features a square version of the letter mark. We've actually just adapted this for these social channels. Now this isn't something that you have to do or you even can do in a lot of situations. It just so happens this works for our branding but this is purely to suit the social channels. If we stuck with the square option we would have to make the square a lot smaller so that it's not getting cropped by the circular appearance of the Facebook profile image for example. Now for the cover images we're simply featuring the full logo here with our tagline. Again this can completely vary depending on what you do. If you actually have products you're selling you may want to feature some of the products. You could equally just feature the tagline or potentially nothing at all. This could just be related brand imagery or assets. Really anything that's just going to complement your brand. So although we've used two different versions of our logos for the profile images and the cover images that's not to say that this is a hard and fast rule and you have to do the same. You will notice though that these logos are positioned very carefully within these safe areas. Now on some of them like these LinkedIn cover images we don't have safe areas per se but we're still making sure that there's plenty of room from the edge of the image so that there's no chance of this getting cropped in any way and generally this just gives the logo a little bit more breathing room so always consider things like this when you're placing in any text or important content within your images as well. You can also be quite clever in how you design your cover images. In our newest example we are offering a free training and so we've actually designed our cover image to point to the prompt to join the free training and this is the same on our Facebook page as well. So you can be very clever in the way you design these and actually use them as call to action sometimes as well. So that's it for an overview of how we go about setting up our designs for social media images. Now like I was saying because these are all set up on artboards it's very easy to export these. So to do that we want to go up to file, export and export for screens and you want to make sure that you're on the artboards tab up at the top and as you can see here we have all of our artboards within this document and you'll notice underneath the thumbnails we have the names of each of these artboards. They all relate to the images they are for. So this makes it nice and easy when we go to export these. They're all going to be named correctly and set up at the correct size. So if you're wanting to export all of them just make sure they're all checked. If not you can clear the selection and select individual artboards if you want. But in this case I'm just going to select all of these. We can 
select a save destination on the right hand side so I'm just saving this to a folder called social images and down below here we can actually set the file format and size so for most social media images a JPEG or a PNG is usually the best way to go so in this case I'm going to stick with JPEG 100 that's simply a JPEG at maximum quality now some of these social media networks do have size limits for images so you may need to adjust that depending on the design you have because this is all vector based I know this is going to be fine but if you contain high resolution images in your designs for example this could bump the file size up considerably so just be wary of that on the scale side of things I'm actually just going to select the 1x option and that just means it's going to export at the size they've been created and because we've set these up at the correct size this is what we want we can also add things like a prefix here so we could specify the company name for example and that's just going to get added to the start of the file name but in this case I'm just going to leave this as is and just click export artboard so here we have all of our exported social media images ready to upload and this was very easy to do but hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you can use this template to create your own branded social media images Thank you.